Hi friends, welcome back to Ontology Explained. I'm Casey Hart, an ontologist and philosopher, and today we're going to cover some basic terms that are prevalent throughout the ontology semantic space. In one of my other videos, I mentioned that I sometimes use knowledge graph and ontology interchangeably, sometimes taxonomy too, but strictly speaking, those terms have different meanings uh, and especially very different meanings depending on who's using them. So I want to go over how they're used in the industry uh, and how they get situated under the broader umbrella of semantics and the semantic web and semantic data as well. So first off, taxonomies. Taxonomies are a hierarchical structure that allow us to classify things. So simple, think of a bunch of different boxes and individuals can fit in one or many of those boxes. The most classic case is the Linnaean taxonomy. So we have kingdom, phylum, etc. right? So you have the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. And if you want to identify where bears go or where foxes go, you see how they sit in underneath you know, their particular species, underneath uh, mammals, underneath vertebrates, etc. And they have this nice feature that as the hierarchy goes down, you sort of inherit features from the things above. So everything that shows up under the box, vertebrates, has a spine, has vertebra, that sort of thing. Uh, we also might want to make a classification system or a taxonomy for, say, video games. So we could split that up into the different types of games, uh, shooters versus puzzle games uh, versus trivia games versus action RPG games. Maybe we could split them up based on who produces the, the games, whether it's you know Bandai Namco, Bungie, 343 Industries, something like that so many different ways that you could facet things, but you can create a taxonomy, which is just a way of splitting things up. And then you can classify individuals by saying, which of these categories do they fit into? So that's a taxonomy, this hierarchical structure. And people often distinguish that from ontology, which is our second term, which we spent a lot of time defining on this channel. So an ontology is, as I've described it, either a set of n tuples or a web of concepts that helps computers or AI understand your data. And we can throw understanding in quotes. I don't have to take any strong view about whether computers are really thinking about your data or not. It just gives you the conceptual web, that conceptual structure that matches up with the way that we humans think about how these concepts relate to one another. And ontology includes taxonomies often, right? You need to know what are the kinds of things and how do individual things fit into that. But ontologies also include uh, the relationships that things can hold to one another. So I don't want to just know what type of video game it is or what type of animal it is. I want to know what are the various anatomical body parts that the animal has and how are they attached to one another. I want to know what types of characters show up in the video game and what kind of relationships they bear to one another or when it was produced, those sorts of things. So a taxonomy gives us just a skeleton maybe and ontology gives us the skeleton and fleshes out the various connections between all the different members of the, the, the various sub taxonomies. And then we have knowledge graphs. Strictly speaking, knowledge graphs should be pretty much the same thing as an ontology. As I described in my other video, ontologies are graphs. So a knowledge graph is just a graph that has knowledge in it, which I'm presuming just about every graph that you're going to be building has that sort of feature. That said, others mean something more particular. They think of ontology as the vocabulary or the language and the knowledge graph as the data that that language is applied to. There's also a distinction between uh, some, some ontologists talk about a T-box versus an A-box, the theory versus the specific assertions. So we have our vocabulary and we have our data, our ontology and our knowledge graph that's more specifically applied doesn't make a big difference to me. Those two I use interchangeably all the time for some deeper reasons that I'll get into in another video. Lastly, I wanna talk a little bit about semantics. Semantics is a buzzword that all of these things fit under. So we talk about the semantic web, semantic data. I'm interested not just application focused mindset, but a more semantic mindset. What does that mean? Couple of different ways to get at it, but essentially, Semantics means we care about meaning, we care about understanding rather than just the syntax shape or structure of the data. So the first use of this goes back to Tim Berners-Lee, the semantic web, where he just means that we need 
uh, an internet that is machine readable. It's not just a bunch of linked documents that humans can go read and find the stuff they want, but rather these linkages are such that a machine can go and pull back the information that we want to find. So that means that the structure of the data on the internet, the semantic web, has to be so interconnected on a conceptual individual sub-level that it can pull back what our data means, not just where it lives. Another way to get at what semantics and semantic data is, is to look at logic. So when you develop a new logic, say a propositional logic, you have to say what symbols are there in my logical language and how do they fit together? And that piece is the syntax. So just what is the grammar for constructing a logical sentence? And then in addition to the syntax, we need an interpretation. So, okay, I can build a syntactically correct sentence, but how do I interpret it? What does it mean? And that's the semantics. And there are a lot of ways to think about what semantics are in that context, but usually the semantics of a logical system is how do we interpret what is true or false? So in a propositional logic case, and we'll do some other videos on this in the future, you use a truth table. So what does or mean? Well, I can say a well-formed sentence is when you have something or something else. So do you want like or subscribe to my video? That's true if you do at least one of those things. So the syntax says, you can say like or subscribe. The semantics is, in what case is it true that you liked or subscribed to my video? That's just in case you did at least one of those two things. And contrast that with another or, an exclusive or, right? If you say, do you want fries or a baked potato with that at the restaurant? They're not saying, do you want at least one of those things or both of them? They're saying, you can pick precisely one of the two. So just the fries, just the baked potato, right? But not both of them. So. Our syntax is what makes a good sentence, and our semantics is how do we interpret that sentence, usually in terms of the truth. So when we go back to talking about the semantic web or semantic data or ontologies, they're semantic in the sense that they help machines understand what's going on. They're not just pulling back locations of files, but actually looking at what the concepts are and how they relate to, to each other. And they should make it more plain how do those claims in the ontology relate to the real world? There we go. A couple of key vocabulary terms, just to quickly highlight them again. We've got taxonomies. That's our skeleton of our ontology. It's a class hierarchy that helps us classify individual things. Think the Linnaean taxonomy. We have our ontology, which is that taxonomy plus the connections that hold it together that gives us that web of concepts that allows AI or computers to understand our data. And knowledge graphs, pretty much the same thing, but to the extent people are distinguishing them, the ontology is the language and the knowledge graph is that applied to specific data. And all of this sits in the realm of semantics, which is helping us understand our data and process them, dating back to Tim Berners-Lee, thinking about the semantic web, and then sort of throughout the history of logic for thinking about the syntax and semantics of our logical systems. Thanks. Hope you have a great day. Make sure to like and subscribe. If there's some other terms you want to find or if something was unclear, throw it down in the comments. I'd be happy to respond there or make some other videos to give more clarity on the subject. Have a great day.